the last official stop on the trip was the port of Odessa, first opened in 1794. Today it's the focal point of this southern Ukrainian city of one million residents, located on the northwest shore of the Black Sea. Each year, the many terminals handle 21 million tons of dry cargo, 25 million tons of bulk cargo, and over a half million containers. Rail access on site allows for many ag commodities to reach the both new and old silo facilities, ferrous and non-ferrous metals, petroleum and vegetable oils, raw sugar and grains, perishables, and containers in a wide variety of sizes come and go 24 hours a day. The many farmers and agribusinesses that welcomed us to their operations had a common theme. Come and see us in 10 years and see how hopefully we have grown. Obviously there's a lot of challenges that the people have faced in the past that they've been through and it's easy to see why it's hard for them to trust people, especially the way the involvement is. And it'll be interesting to see how it changes as they're making these steps to progress into the future. Traveling over to the Ukraine has been a great experience. This is my first time over overseas, and you know I, I kind of got to see what people live like, you know, in other countries. You know, the port from the poor to the to the rich, you know, they they all had their way of life that was quite a bit different than back home. There are guarded people. I can t you know I I feel you know they've had different. Um, Countries come in and want to take over, you know, have more influence on their uh, economics and their industry and their farming. Um, however, you know, I think a lot of the farmers are very proud people. Everyone that we met was very uh, proud of, of their operation from the small to the large. There are many challenges ahead in regard to the future of agriculture in Ukraine. Storage capacity for grain is increasing, but at a very slow pace. Transportation via highway and rail is a challenge due to poor infrastructure. Biotechnology is currently illegal, restraining the ability on potential yields. And acquisition of equipment is a challenge due to interest rates on money at 27 percent. It would be interesting to learn more about it, how much they're using the rails and the rivers here. There seems to be the roads are spotty. There's areas where they're really good and areas where they're not so hot. You don't see a lot of on-farm storage, which is surprising that they haul so much to a, a big local elevator. Some of these large farms, you would think there would be more on-farm storage. We did talk with some large processors and some large commercial farming operations, and I gather from speaking with those people that bank credit uh, at a more uh, conventional rate is available uh, for, those, for those people. And speaking with um, some of the representatives, uh, government representatives here, uh, we found that uh, credit sources include Poland, Germany, uh, the UK, and, and possibly the Scandinavian countries, though I'm not sure about that latter. On the side of the state-run Ivan Honchar Museum in Kiev, there's the Before I Die Wall, where people write their fervent wishes, many in hope of a better future. From what the tour participants saw over their seven days in country, Ukraine has the potential to prosper and grow.